Okay, let's talk about this property here. And if you know the name of it, go ahead and put that into the comment section. Uh, you probably can see it in the title of this video. This is the what? Drum roll, please. This is the distributor property, and it is absolutely essential to your success in algebra. Okay, you really need to know how to work with the distributor property. It's almost like everywhere. Okay, and it's an awesome property too. Matter of fact, if I had to pick one of my like if I had to pick my favorite um, algebra property, I know that's kind of weird. Everyone's got their favorite uh, sports team or their favorite food. I Me, I'm like, hey, I, I got my favorite um, algebra property. I would have to say it would be the distributor property. I'll show you why here in a second. But we're going to do a quick review of what the distributor property is and its application in algebra, stuff that you need to know to be successful in algebra. And uh, if uh, the distributor property is kind of confusing uh, for you, put that into the comment section if you've been struggling with it, because this is a typical area where a lot of students, uh, a lot of algebra students make mistakes. But we're going to go ahead and fix all that up for you in this little quick video. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But if you are frustrated with math, maybe you're just not doing as well as you know that you have the potential to do so. Maybe you're not getting enough math instruction. That's probably the case. Or you're not connecting with your teacher's teaching style. Whatever the, uh, whatever uh, reason, okay, you're not doing as well as you want to be doing in math. I can help you out. I've been teaching math for decades, and I break things down in bite-sized pieces in a super clear and understandable way, so anyone can be successful in math. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level. In mathematics, I can help you uh, be successful with your respective math courses. Now, if you're preparing with any test, uh, preparing for any test that has a math section, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACPLACER, ALEX exam, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam. You get the idea. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, you definitely got to check out my homeschool math program, full courses, comprehensive curriculum. And if you don't have any math notes, don't panic. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. But if you truly want great grades in math, you got to take great math notes. This is non-negotiable. All right, so let's get into the distributor property. And, of course, this is uh, how you would see it. So when you're taking your notes in your algebra class, you'd be given something like this. A, okay, it'd be parentheses, B plus C, uh, and close parentheses, equal to AB plus AC. So that's typically the way you'll see it. This is the distributor property. Uh, but let's kind of really give some meaning to it. So when you, you know, unfortunately, you know, if you're learning math right now and, you know, you just get like some property but no, not enough examples in terms of the application of the property, it's going to be confusing. So let's get some real um, color to uh, the distributor property. Now, the distributor property is all about multiplication, okay? So we're talking about taking something outside of this parentheses, we're talking about multiplying it uh, with uh, respect to a sum or a difference, okay? It's all about multiplication, and let's see how the distributive property works, okay? And we're actually going to um, look at the distributive property in action with just numbers, and then we'll bring in some algebra here in a second. So let's take a look at this problem here, and this is 3 times 10. Now we all know three times uh, three times ten is thirty. No mystery there. But let's use the distributive property to get the same answer. Three times ten. We're going to do it in a different way. So let's think of um, ten, but we're going to rewrite ten as a sum. We're going to say, okay, uh, let's think of ten as ten or seven plus three, because seven plus three is ten. Okay, so uh, effectively, this problem three times ten is the is this problem is equivalent to this problem, three times seven plus three enclosed in parentheses like this is the same thing as three times ten. So let's go ahead and apply the distributive property. Well, the distributive property, that word distributive is like distribution, right? We're like kind of passing things out. So we're going to take this three right here, what's on the outside of the distributive property. And we're going to multiply it by this number. So that's going to be 3 times 7. And then we're going to, because this is an addition problem, we're going to write that addition operator. And then we're going to multiply 3 times 3 right there. Okay. So let's see uh, what happens when we do this. So 3 times 7, of course, is 21. 
plus three times three, of course, is nine. 21 plus nine is 30. Okay, so three times 10, of course, is 30. But we can see how we can break this up by distributing this uh, three to these uh, internal numbers right here. Okay, this right here is the distributive property in action. Now, let's take a look at this uh, problem. And let's do it a different way, okay? Let's do three times 10, but this time, uh, this, time, this uh, three times 10, we're gonna look at it as a difference, okay? So 12 minus two is 10. So we know the answer here is gonna be 30 as well, All right? So let's see how the distributive property, whoops, uh, comes into play right here. Again, we're going to distribute this outside number, okay, to this internal number, so that'll be three, times 12 right there. Now, because this is subtraction, we're gonna write that subtraction operator and then it's gonna be three times two right there. And this is the distributive property in action, okay? So whatever's outside here, this is our A, and you can write this as B minus C, and that's gonna be equal to AB minus AC, okay? So hopefully this is making sense, but I wanna show you with numbers, arithmetic, how this you know is true. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. All right, so three times 12 is 36 minus uh, three times two is six. 36 minus six, oh, lo and behold, it is 30. Okay, so you can see that the distributive property works with both sums and sum and uh, sums and differences. Okay, so in other words, although I write the distributive property this way, a times uh, uh, a times b plus c that's equal to a b plus a c. I could have just have, uh, as well wrote, uh, wrote the property this way. Both are true, okay? But uh, hopefully you can see how awesome this is because let's say you're doing, oh, what's seven times 96? Uh, and you're like, well, you can always go 96 times seven and do, you know, old school arithmetic and you need to know how to do that. But if I'm like seven times 96, uh, I can go, hmm, let's go seven times 90 plus six, all right? And then I can just figure out what seven times 90 is gonna be, okay? Which would be much easier to do plus seven times six, and you get the same answer, all right? So the distributive property, its application really helps us with, you know, deal with uh, multiplication problems uh, in arithmetic as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and apply this to algebra. And I have three problems here. We're gonna wrap up uh, this video after doing these three problems. If you think you could do these problems right now, okay, if you're in algebra or pre-algebra, you should know how to do these three problems, okay? If you can't do them, well, we're, I'm gonna go over them and you're gonna uh, learn how to do them, but this is an application of the distributed property. So if you wanna pause the video and try these, go ahead and do so, but let's go ahead and tackle this first problem right here. Okay, so again, we have a number outside of a sum. Now, just because this sum has a variable, the distributor properly uh, applies as well. And it's really the key to unlocking expressions like this in algebra. You absolutely, it's essential that you understand how to um, correctly apply and or execute the distributor property. So this is gonna be two times X. Let's just write the whole thing out. That would be two times X plus two times five two times five, okay? When you get, uh, get more practice, you could just say, oh, that's just two X plus 10, all right? So you're like, oh, two X plus two times five, that is 10. Now, a common mistake that I've seen over decades of teaching math is students will go, oh, that's two X plus five. They'll distribute here, but they forget to distribute there, okay? I've probably seen this mistake, oh, 12,000 times uh, over my uh, career. Well, maybe uh, maybe less, maybe more, but you get the idea. I've seen it a ton of times. So when you've been teaching math as long as I have, you just kind of already know the type of mistakes that students are going to make. Okay, so don't make this mistake is the whole main point, right? 2x plus 10, that is our answer to this first problem. Now, if you got this right, let me go ahead and give you a little happy face and a check mark just to make you feel extra special today. All right, so let's go ahead and tackle this problem. So I have 4y, notice I'm looking at these grouping symbols and I have a sum or difference inside, i.e. I have something being um, added up or subtracted. So here I can apply the distributive property. So this is gonna be 4y times y. So what's that? Okay, that's gonna be 4y squared, 
all right? So you have to understand powers for y times y. Uh, the y times y is y squared. So then I'm going to have 4y uh, times this 1. Of course, this is minus. Okay, this is a subtraction operator, so i got to leave that there, or a difference operator. So it's going to be uh, 4y squared minus 4y. Now, notice here, okay, that the answer, let's look at the answer here for a second. 4y squared minus uh, 4y is equal to this, 4y times y minus 1. So the distributive property is multiplication, but when you go backwards, when you undo multiplication, this is called factoring, okay? Uh, factoring, it's critical, right? These skills are absolutely essential to your success in mathematics. You can't be good at factoring unless you're good at the distributive property, okay? And what we're doing here actually is factoring out the greatest common factor. But um, uh, again, you know, skills and application of the distributive property. Uh, before you can factor, you have to learn how to multiply and multiplication uh, in terms of dealing with variable expressions in algebra requires a solid understanding of the distributive property. Okay, so here is our last problem. Uh, hopefully you can do it if you want to go ahead and try this real quick before you see me do the answer, uh, write the answer out here. But let's go ahead and tackle it now. So this is going to be 2x times x squared is going to be 2x cubed now, minus, okay, I have a minus here, so it'll be 2x. And by the way, you the distributive property, you can have as many different sum or difference, as, sum and differences in your parentheses, okay? Does it make a difference? So it's 2x times 5x is what? That would be 10x squared, and then 2x times is 3, but this, remember, this is addition. So whatever op, uh, operations here, you're going to put that there. Okay, I'm going to put that there. So 2x times 3 is 6x, and this is the answer. All right, if you got all this right, i got to go ahead and give you a nice happy face with a good old 1985 Mohawk haircut and an A+. Matter of fact, I'm going to throw in a few stars so you can have an extra special day, but job well done, okay? you got to understand the distributor property, and you got to practice it a lot more um, than these type of problems, okay? You want to get into more challenging problems, especially when, you know, with fractions and decimals and more powers and different type of variables. But um, I'm certainly not, you know, uh, lying to you when I'm telling you that the distributive property and your full mastery of it is going to be essential to your success in algebra, okay? So if you just kind of you know, follow my guidance on this, and I'm not going to lead you down the wrong path. And if you like this video, go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos from basic math to calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all my content that I've posted and will be posting. But my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.